By popular demand, two people, it's time to do the range review. Welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we make more, spend less, and go faster. So we do love a 3D scanner on this channel. And we've already done a video on this one's little brother, the Pop 3. So now it's time to do the range. So the range is made for larger items, got a wider field of view. So if you want to be doing bodywork or cast type stuff, this is probably more likely than thing you need. And yes, I'm fully aware the Range 2 has already been announced and Revo Point are pushing that hard, but I don't have one of them. I've got one of these. And I reckon you should be able to pick these up for pretty good money sometime soon, if not from Revo Point, then on the second-hand market. So is this still a useful scanner in 2024? Well, to find out, I did a range. Come on, see what I did there? Of different scans, including me, the BMW differential that you saw in the previous video, and a load of different bodywork scans inside and outside to try and test every single part of this scanner when it comes to bodywork. So by the end of this, you should have a really good feel for how useful of a tool the range is. Right then, let's dive in. So first off, unboxing. Now the range just comes in a normal looking box with a foam insert, so there's no carry case. And compared to the Pop 3, it's definitely got a cheaper feel. That aside, you've got everything you need. You've got all of your cables well labeled. You've got your little extendable tripod mount and you've got your battery handle for mobile phone scanning. It's pretty much all in there. With one notable exception, the POP3 and those other types of scanners tend to come with a little turntable. Well, Revo Point sent me their big turntable. It's got a 200 kilogram limit, so you could put an engine on there if you wanted to. It is a proper piece of kit with lots of gravity in it. I'm quite impressed with just the build quality of this item. Comes at quite the price there. So right now the range isn't available on the Revo Point website. You try and click on it, it diverts you directly to the range too. But you can find them on Amazon for about 720 quid, right next to the range two on offer for 699 pounds, 20 quid cheaper. I don't get it. But what it is is a logical consequence of Revo Point bringing out a new scanner in each area pretty much every year, like their iPhones. Now this is good because there's lots of improvement, but at the same time, it does make you feel like things are getting made obsolete very quickly. The plus side of that though, is that people move on with it. So you can pick these up on eBay for about 400 quid and you can guarantee they're gonna be very lightly used. So what is the competition for this scanner? Well, 400 quid off eBay, very little. But at 700 quid, well, the Range 2 is the main piece of competition. And actually, it's not much cheaper than the Einstar at that point. But I don't have a Range 2. I do have an Einstar, so I'm going to compare it to that just to sh really show the difference. That's all the waffle out of the way. Let's do some scanning. First off, we did a scan of a person. Now this is something that Revo Point have pushed really hard in their marketing for the range. So we've got to give it a go. Couldn't find any willing volunteers. So I had to mount the big spinning turntable and rotate like an idiot. But I did manage to talk Dave from DC3D into scanning me. So pretty much straight away on starting, there were a couple of things that were immediately obvious. Number one, there is a definite technique to scanning a person. And Dave and I did not know what that was, but we worked it out along the way, scan the face and the head fairly quickly early on in the scan, and then take your time over the rest of the body. Because apparently I'm unable to keep still or quiet. It's like I'm a toddler. But number two, the range was seemingly made for this. It did very well. There was very, very little tracking loss, if any at all, and it just worked. 
within 30 minutes or so, we'd got multiple different scans done. And if I really, really wanted a scan of myself, I'd be able to put together a really good version between all of these. Or if we gave it a bit more effort, then we'd have come up with something pretty much perfect. Well, as perfect as a scan of me can be. But here you are. I've spent zero time on post-processing and it is very recognizably that idiot from the YouTube. So if your use case is scanning people, stop right now, go out, buy a range, maybe a range two, you're gonna do very well. This is better than the Einstar for scanning people. But we don't wanna scan people on this channel, we wanna scan bits and cars. So let's get back to a classic. Yes, it's the differential, one of the first things I scanned on the channel. So it's nice to go back to it with the range and the range did a good job. So I spent about 25 minutes total. I did two scans, one from the top and one with it flipped over so I could get the bottom. After each model was fused, I did some cleaning up using the tools in the software, just deleting the table it was on and some of the floating pieces and then put the two pieces together in the merge with one click it worked really really well so let's talk about the software for just a minute because it is a real big step up from where revo point used to be and i did talk about it in the pop 3 video which you can see here but the workflow is really good it's got all of the tools that you need like connected domain and invert and all these other useful tools for cleaning up scans and like I say, the, the merge function works really well and you've got that all important back button that I haven't seen anywhere else. It is really good. You've got the one touch processing. It's very user friendly, very intuitive and right up there. The software isn't perfect. There are a couple of problems. One is marker mode, which I'll touch on later. But the other one is the lack of the ability to orientate the model to the global coordinate system so you can't have it up is up when you load it into something else it'll be in 3d space in a random position that you've got to deal with now this isn't the end of the world because you can easily reorientate it in programs like mesh mixer it's just an extra step that you've got to do and it'd be nice to have it all in one place but equally on the plus side it's not resource hungry you don't need a massive computer in fact anything with a graphics card and eight gigabytes of RAM will do the job. Hey, you can run it on a phone. Now you can't say any of that for the Einstar. So that's it on the software. And this is the scan that we got of the diff, which is okay, maybe not the cleanest or the prettiest, but you know what? It is usable in pretty much any application. So again, another useful scan. Let's try some bodywork. So I did a range of bodywork scans, twice, yeah, I know. I'll stop it now. But I think bodywork is what a lot of you guys might be using this kind of scanner for. So I thought, oh, that's where I'll bias most of my effort. And to be fair, got reasonable results for most of it. And one absolute failure. First off, some of the good results. So we did the front of the mini with feature tracking. And it did well. There was a fair amount of loss tracking when we got to the planar areas of bodywork. You could deal with all of that by using the back button, but that does kind of break your flow when you're in the middle of a scan. So it would be better if Revo Point could just tweak that detection of losing tracking rather than keep writing all that data to the model. But after about 10, 15 minutes, I got a decent result. Now that result looks good from afar and it's definitely usable. You could pull some curves off it, but you zoom in and the bodywork definitely needs a bit of smoothing. And unfortunately that means you lose some detail on the finer areas. So next up we did marker mode tracking. Now this is important because if you've got a larger car with larger panels, you're not gonna stand a chance of making it work with feature. So I stuck on all of the markers that I got with the rain, just the front corner of the Mini. I mean, it's a Mini, it's not that big. So if you're thinking about getting this and using it for panels, then 
yeah, you might need a few more markers. Like a lot more. The problem is in this mode, it just doesn't work. But I believe you need to have at least five markers in the field of view of the scanner at any given point. And with the POP3, that was virtually impossible. With the range, it's doable because you've got that wider field of view. But as soon as you go outside of that area that you've put markers on, because it's no longer looking at the features to track, it's dead. You can scan nothing. It just loses tracking straight away. I hate marker mode on every single 3D scanner. The need to use these to do smooth panels kills me. I'm sticking them all on like one by one in a deliberate random pattern and then having to pick them off with your fingernail. I, it, it gets me looking at the wires that come with the 3D scanner and see if I can make a noose out of them so I can end it. Yeah, so marker mode is bad. But we did do a third scan, which was using feature mode where the markers were also applied. Now that worked really well because it gave the scanner this kind of hybrid mode where it still looked at the features of the subject being scanned, but it also saw the markers as features. So if you've got a detail area, you don't need to put markers on it. And then if you run over a smoother area, you can just put markers on that and you don't have to see five of them to make it work. Um, and this worked really well for the scanner. So this is something I'd really suggest to you guys out there. If you have got one of these, try this out. Yes, you still need to put some markers on so it's not brilliant, but you can focus them on the key areas rather than having to smother the entire subject in markers. So far, so good. We've got reasonably useful scans out of this, and if we wanted to, we could progress around the whole car, and probably in three or four hours, we'd have a decent model of the whole thing. But I wanted to go and scan something else, so we went out to scan Project Rally 36 on the driveway in the sunlight. Well, the cloud light, this is England and it was abysmal. Didn't get anything. And yes, okay, the paintwork's slightly shinier, but this is not a clean car, this is a rally car. I barely got anything. I tried several corners, some of the most feature-rich part of the bodywork, nothing. Yes, it can do bodywork, as we proved with the Mini, but if you're planning on taking this out and about with the mobile phone on it and scanning random cars you come across, well, yeah, I don't think that's going to work. So as a comparison, this is how the Einstar scanned the same subject, the Mini. And I've got to be honest, it was smooth as silk. There was minimal tracking loss. The software picked it up really easily and the finished result just looks great. Yes, the Einstar is more money. It, it's a lot more money. And yes, you need a hefty PC to make it work. So. If you've got to go out and buy a PC to make the Einstar work, you're going to spend about four times as much money as just using the one that you've got, that you're doing your 3D modeling on and buying in the range. So the last thing I tested was the mobile phone integration. So this works for iOS and Android now. So I connected my iPhone 13 Pro to the Wi-Fi connection on the range and got scanning. So for this, I redid the third bodywork scan where I had it in features tracking, but we had markers applied to the bodywork and it did a great job. The only wire involved was powering the range from the battery hand grip and it, yeah, it was great. It scanned really nicely, maybe slightly slower than using a computer, but I've got to say it's really impressive and hats off to Everpoint for making that work quite so well. So I can hear what you're saying. David, just tell us, is it any good? Yeah, I, it is, I think. It gives you a result that you can reverse engineer off, you could put into layouts, and you know it's got a degree of accuracy that is probably well above what any home gamer really needs. The software is intuitive and relatively slick, and you don't need to know a hell of a lot of stuff up front just to make it work. So, you know, compared to other scanners that have made me want to poke my own eyeballs out, I didn't get that with the range. However, it's not without its foibles and frustrations. The lack of tracking, 
is annoying, but it's not a disaster because of the back button, but it still needs the user to have a good idea of what they're doing. So if you're a first timer, then just be aware, there's gonna be a bit of a learning curve for you here to be able to get to the kind of results that I've shown you in this video. The Revo Point Pop 3 is my go-to scanner for the smaller items and things on turntables and tripod scanning, but I'm sticking with the Einstar for medium and larger objects like we've looked at in this video. Now maybe the Range 2 might narrow that gap. It might unseat the Einstar. We'll have to see. Put your opinions down in the comments, let me know. So that's it, and if you're still watching now, please hit the thumbs up, it really does help. You can subscribe, you can go to the website, you can buy some merch, you can join the Patreon, join these wonderful humans scrolling across there. Oh, wonderful, look at them, beautiful people, every single one. So if you're interested in 3D scanning, you'll probably enjoy this video, or indeed this video. But that's it from me, so until next time, stay hydrated. I love being hydrated.